Hi everyone. Um, I feel honored to be here. Uh, um, as you rightly said, my name is Abigail Mr. Lambi Dombe and I'm Ghanaian, but I currently live in, in, in the U.S., specifically in Cincinnati because I started grad school at the University of Cincinnati and I'm conducting research as well um, in open source. Um, so yes, I have another name as well. I think this is really something that is typical of Africans. Um, usually, you meet um, Africans and they have like four to five names. <laughs> so yes, um, I'm also called Abina because um, I was born on a Tuesday. And so most definitely if um, you're here and you'd love to know what a Ghanaian name that like, you could have, um, just feel free to reach out to me and let's just chat about it. Just let me know the day you were born and I could definitely let you know what your name is, like what your Ghanaian name is. Yeah. <laughs> um, so at the end of my talk today, I hope that it encourages you to contribute to the um, open source movement in Africa. I got introduced to open source in 2017, um, right after spending four years in my undergraduate study, um, studying computer science and engineering, which I didn't like. Um, <laughs> that's actually like very strange, right? Um, but I spent four years in um, something that I didn't like and got introduced to open source through um, Django Girls, um, which is an organization that is getting more women into open source um, through helping them to create websites using Django and then Python. Um, after I first got introduced, I was encouraged by um, a Jamaican who currently lives in Ghana called Silent Wex. I was encouraged by him to also um, give back and then also bring in some more women into open source. Um, since 2017, I've um, helped build communities like Pi Ladies Ghana. I've helped also um, build other communities outside of Ghana um, in um, countries like Mon Monrovia. Um, I've helped with the Nigerian Pi Ladies communities as well. Um, I've interacted with folks from Zimbabwe as well, and I've gone on to um, also be a part of the organizing team at PyCon Africa, um, which was a very, very great success in 2019. Um, this journey hasn't been easy, especially for someone who um, has still been trying to carve her path or trying to find like where I belong um, in the field of IT or say computer science in general. Um, and I'm glad that I was able to find a community that um, not only gave me the power um, to be able to carve a career path for myself, but then also gave me the power to be able to also bring in more people um, into the space to be able to also carve a career path for themselves. Um, so yeah, this is a very cute African map. Um, now, Africa is home to over uh, 1.3 billion people. And I mean, it's the second largest population in the world. And over the years, we've seen like the rise of open source communities, open source projects from different parts um, of Africa. And the way that people have used open source um, in Africa has been to transform their lives um, and generally to actually make um, people connect more um, whilst also making life and livelihood like, better. Now, there are lots of languages, like different languages spread across Africa. Um, I come from an ethnic group in Ghana, which is which are like we are called Guans. And recently, I was reflecting on why Guans don't even speak the same language. I mean, we are all Guans, but we even have different languages. I could meet a Guan and not even understand what they are speaking. 
Now, and as I was reflecting, um, I think that one of the things that played a role um, to how these different languages came up as a migration, I mean, just really people moving, up, moving around the world trying to um, find like a better place and also, I mean, make sure that the future generations are um, also are able to grow and then uh, make the world a better place. Now, a lot of the times um, I've come across folks who, are, who have been asking about what it looks like um, in open, open source in Africa. And I would say one thing that open source is doing for us in Africa and as Africans is that it's uniting us, it's bringing us together um, to work on a lot of projects that um, you folks here or myself here have probably been using and might not really know about. So this is um, a graph and some analysis that was done by ictworks.org in 2022. Um, so this is, this is just for uh, data that was gathered from GitHub and shows the trends of open source contributions from African users between 2010 and then 2020. Now, from this graph, it showed that the number of GitHub authors um, from Africa rose um, from 0 0.5 to um, 2.7 between 2010 to 2020, which means, which means that there's actually been a lot of growth with regards to who is um, trying to contribute to open source, of course, using the GitHub platform. And these are just like folks who have created accounts or like who are GitHub like authors. Now coming to the contributors, from 2010, we saw a growth uh, in the total number of people from Africa who are contributing to open source um, through building tools and all. Um, we saw a growth from 0.3% to 2.3%, um, which is actually a very, very um, low level thing, you know. And according to this analysis, most of these people from Africa came from South Africa, Egypt, um, Kenya, and then Nigeria. So you find um, these people building um, a whole lot of projects um, that are being used both in Africa and then worldwide as well. Right. Now, there are various things, like a lot of things that means a lot like to Africa when it comes to identity. Um, I'll talk about my name a lot because um, it means a lot to me. For, I have four names, and they all mean something, right? And I really love to talk about it because I get to talk about where, I'm, where I come from and get to show people um, what it means to me. But for the purpose of this talk, I'm going to touch on language, technology, and then community. Just basically um, looking at how um, Africans are using open source to innovate in these different areas. So as I mentioned earlier, like there are a whole lot of languages like spread um, widely spread in Africa, and I also found out that the African languages represent over thirty percent of the world's languages, uh, which is actually very great because, I mean, Africa is home to um, a lot of people from different backgrounds. But then also um, English, Spanish, and French through colonization have become languages that um, different African countries have adopted. Now, the underlying problem is that technology is not yet available for many of these different local dialects. And 
These are just a few organizations that have tried or are still trying to um, innovate in this space um, using open source. Now, the first organization here is the Masakani Community, um, which is an open source natural language processing project aimed at um, addressing native African language representation online. Now, how are they doing this? They are using machine learning to translate African languages to help bridge the gap um, in, in uh, digital inclusion. Now, they've currently built translation models um, for over 38 African languages by using Joy LMT, which is an open source um, education framework. Another community I'd like to talk about is Zindi. So think of Zindi as the cargo, um, but for like Africa. Zindi is a platform where folks are able to connect, find a lot of like um, data sets, no. African data sets, and people are able to connect, come together, and uh, build innovative solutions as well, hone their skills, and then provide, at the end of the day, what it does is also to provide job opportunities for these people who are able to come together um, to innovate using data. Now, for technology-wise, um, there are two things I would like to talk about. Tools that are being built um, by Africans. And then also an encyclopedia of African history which is being championed by um, a Ghanaian lady. It's, I find this project really interesting because a lot of the times we think about open source and all we are talking about is coding. But what about the other areas that we can apply open source? So these are um, just but a few projects that Africans have come together to actually create using open source. Um, they are the likes of Chakra UI, um, there's Downfo JS, um, and these Africans are innovating by building libraries, frameworks, extensions, um, and ch chatbots that is actually really helping in um, translations. Um, So this is a project that Nana Oforiata Ayip is building. She's Ghanaian, who was uh, born in Europe. And the aim of this project is to help document past, present, and then future African arts and culture. She started with Ghana, and she's hoping to um, come up with all together 54 volumes um, of platforms where people can learn more about the different things uh, when it comes to art in the, in the different um, countries in Africa. Now on community. So this, this picture was taken at the first ever PyCon Africa. And I, like I said earlier, I happen to have been a part of the co-organizers. This event happened in 2019 and saw over um, 400 people join us from over 26 countries in Africa and also outside of Africa. One thing that really stood out for me during the conference was the diversity and inclusivity. Um, we, the team was able to actually provide a lot of resources to help people like folks who were disabled or people who had some form of disability to be able to feel comfortable. We had um, this, this, this lady who I, I, I really admire, 
who was actually deaf, but um, like she couldn't hear, but she was there and felt really welcome to share her project and how she was contributing to open source. Um, we opened our doors as well to uh, foreigners as well who flew in from the US, from Europe, um, from Asia, and I mean, all, of, all, all, all other, I mean, countries. This, com um, this community or this particular conference was a huge success. And we had a second one in 2020, but that was during um, the COVID era. And, and so we moved it online and all, and things really moved slow because of the effect of COVID. But then I would also like to mention a few other communities that are in Africa and are making waves. I decided to put this together in a repository sometime this year because I'm, a, I'm also on a journey of learning more about the other different open source communities. Um, so there's PyCon Africa, there's the Open Source Community Africa, there's Everything Open Source, there's Chaos Africa as well. I'm sure a few of us here might already know about Chaos, um, which is focused on community health. Um, there's also Jungle Girls that's encouraging more women um, into open source through Python and then the Django programming, the Django framework. And there's also She Code Africa, um, which is, is also an organization that is helping more women by um, equipping them with resources and all to be able to get them into tech. And they have an initiative called Contribute a Fund, um, where they pair women to open source projects and organizations to help them work on different open source projects. And there's also the Linux um, user group um, of Mauritius. I would definitely love to highlight these people who are um, helping yep. push the whole open source movement in Africa. This Marlene Mangami, who is um, a developer advocate, um, who is doing a lot of work both in Zimbabwe and then the entire of Africa. Um, she was the co, um, she was the chair of PyCon Africa in 2019 and 2020, and she's still really doing amazingly well by bringing others into open source. There's also Samson Gordy, who is from Nigeria. There's Velda Kiara from Kenya. Um, who is contributing to open source um, through um, technical writing and then also bringing in more people by leading communities in her country. Um, there's Mari Young, who is also from Ghana, um, who has also generally been contributing to the open source um, community in Africa and then also internationally. There's Yan Yama, um, who is championing the efforts of bringing more women into open source. That's Ruthie Kega, who unfortunately couldn't be here. Um, she's doing amazingly well um, with Chaos Africa and some other projects as well. There's Sheena O'Connell, um, who is from South Africa, also really, really um, doing well in educating people through coding um, and then also contributing to the open source community in South Africa. There's also Anna Makaruze, um, who is currently the chair of the Django software community in Africa, um, which is um, actually going to take place, um, the first of its kind, going to take place next month in Tanzania, Zanzibar. So I'm inviting you all to be a part of it. Um, Anna Makaruze also was once um, on the board at the Django Software Foundation. And she inspires me so much because it's really not easy to um, be in some of these spaces. But I really do admire how these people are able to bring more people um, from the international environment into Africa to be able to come together um, to inspire and then bring a lot of people into the world of tech. 
Now, for Africans, it means a lot to us to be able to encourage people to um, join in the open source movement because open source has actually given a lot of opportunities to people. They say, um, if you want to move forward as someone who is upcoming, contribute to open source. Contribute to open source. Try and find projects so that you can hone your skills in the different tech skills that you find your um, tech areas that you find yourself in. But sometimes the challenge is people are able to contribute to open source, but unfortunately, um, organizations don't want to have them because they are upcoming. So this is one of the challenges that we are facing um, with regards to our open source communities in Africa. We are able to push folks to contribute to open source projects and help build stuff. But unfortunately, some of our junior developers struggle to actually find job opportunities. Um, and then also another um, challenge is, has got to do with resources. I moved to the US last year and uh, a lot of the times I reflect on how privileged I find like myself, especially in the area that I find myself in. I have never had to really think about like my Wi-Fi going off, like, you know, and also probably electricity like going off on me and all of that because sometimes like back home, these are some of the uh, challenges that we face. You could probably be in a meeting and the light goes off. There goes your internet as well. And we've done a lot of work to actually take open source to some remote areas as well. But these are some of the challenges that these remote areas face. And I personally know Martha Tay, who um, is a machine learning engineer and researcher uh, who has also built this educational platform which is like low cost and was able to deploy it such that folks in remote areas wouldn't need a lot of um, resources to be able to like connect to this platform and then also learn how to code to be able to find, I mean, a better life for themselves. Now, another challenge that we have um, is with regards to travel and then visas. A lot of the times, um, even within Africa, it's not easy to travel even within Africa. Um, sometimes, as an African, you might need a visa to be able to travel to another African country, which uh, sometimes surprises me because, I mean, I live in Cincinnati and I use my um, state ID and I'm able to go to a different state, say, Washington, um, and I mean, it's, it's not really a problem. All I need to get is my ticket. Um, sometimes this is really um, a challenge. And then also even being able to travel outside of Africa to be able to contribute to the open source community um, in international spaces. Um, in 2019, I, I was on this journey of uh, getting my first international open source experience, but unfortunately I got back-to-back -back visa denials. And sometimes these, these things are discouraging uh, because, I mean, it's, we really want to do more to be able to bring like, open source to like, more people back home in Africa. So when we do get the opportunities, um, but unfortunately, these are some of the challenges that we have and some of the ways that we've been able to help solve this, which I think is work in progress, is actually talking more about it, especially on social media. Um, also, thank you so much to the some of the international communities who are helping very much in um, helping more Africans I mean, travel outside of Africa to be able to contribute to their um, open source communities and events. 
Um, some of them have gone out of their way to provide lawyers who sort of speak to like the embassies and all. Um, some have gone well, some haven't. <laughs> but um, there's a lot of work that we could do around this. And now, even because of COVID, there, there's um, a long wait time with regards to when you can even hear about the results of your um, visa application. So maybe another thing would be to uh, plan ahead of time and then um, let these international folks that we want to bring into our um, events to participate, like plan ahead of time so that we'll be able to avoid some of these like, delays and all. And I mean, I really personally commend this conference for all the efforts they've put into um, getting people here. I have organized events and I've been sponsored to also attend other events, but I've never seen um, something like this, like with regards to how things were done, uh, flights were booked so early, I mean, the accommodation, everything was sorted out like very early, which is something that I really appreciated. I also really hope to um, implement or also encourage other conference organizers to do. Now, I definitely would love to do more um, through everything open source and then research. Everything open source is an organization I started, which is non-profit. Um, I have, even though I have mainly been doing a lot of open source stuff, um, I found that I was really doing a lot of Python stuff and wanted to move out like of the Python world to be able to do more. So I started everything open source to be able to uh, consider what it looks like in the different areas that people can contribute to open source. Um, in the fields of um, technical writing, uh, UI, UX design, and not, and not only focus on the coding part of uh, open source contributions. Um, through research as well, um, looking into improving DEI in open source community leadership. A lot of the times, um, from my experience and from some of the communities that I've been involved in, um, after selection of board members or during elections and all, I mean, a lot of folks are like, we don't really think that our team is um, diverse enough. We want more people. We want more people representing us in the different areas that our communities are located. So I'm trying to look at how we can use research um, to help solve that issue. So why should you be a part of this? Why should you be a part of this open source movement in Africa? Now, a lot of us here have built tools that a lot of Africans might be using or are using. Um, Africans have also built tools that a lot of us here might be using, we might never know. But it would actually be a great effort to see how we can collaborate. And as part of the things that I, I really want to do is to bring some of these um, international spaces, organizations as well to Africa um, to see how best we can bring people together through contributing to open source. Again, another thing, another reason why you should be a part of the open source movement Africans are here, we are right here, and we are making an impact while bringing others to open source. I came to this conference looking forward to meeting other Africans as well. Lo and behold, I found two other Africans, one from Uganda and the other from South Africa, and I was really, really happy um, to have found them. I hope that my talk inspired you to think about how you intend to help um, with regards to building the open source community in Africa. And I'm also looking forward to Community of Accord Africa. Is this going to be the next conference we are going to have? Well, I would really encourage that. And um, 
I hope that if that should happen, I'm going to see a lot of the faces that I've seen here. Thank you.